In this video, we're going to do two induction questions. One will be on a calculus concept. The other one will be on a linear algebra concept. If you don't have those backgrounds, uh, the first one should be doable. The second one, maybe not so much. So uh, first one, we want to show that f of x equals to x plus n implies that the derivative of f of x is equal to nx to the n minus 1 for all n greater or equal to 1. So again, we know that if f of x is equal to 3x squared, then its derivative f prime of x is just equal to 6x. So we take the power, multiply it by the coefficient, and then take the power down a notch. So let's start with the base case. So the base case is pretty straightforward. So we need to show that n equals 1 is true. Well, if f of x is equal to x, then f prime of x is equal to well, this is just 1 times x to the 0, which is equal to 1, and we know this is true. Okay, so there's a concrete example to get ourselves off the ladder, or I should say onto the ladder. Uh, the next part, you might not know where to go with this. So the induction hypothesis, we say that n equals k is true. So we're going to assume that if f of x is equal to x to the k, then f prime of x is equal to k times x to the k minus 1. So now we need to show that n equals k plus 1 is true. So how do we do this? Well, let's take f of x equal to x to the k plus 1. And we need to get it somehow into an x to the k. So what we can do is we can uh, change the exponent. So x to the k plus 1 is the same thing as x to the k times x. Okay, well, x is our base case, and x to the k is our induction hypothesis. So we can use the uh, power rule, or sorry, it's the product rule. Yeah, the product rule. And we can show this is true. Okay, so if fx is equal to x to the k times x, then by the product rule, we know that we take the derivative of the first. So this is kx to the k minus 1, our induction hypothesis times the second, and then we add the first times the derivative of the second, which is just one. So you might be thinking, wait a second, if we don't know the power rule is true, how can we be using the product rule? Well, we can use it because we've already checked the base case, which appears in our derivative, and we've already checked the induction hypothesis, because we're assuming it's true, which is in the derivative. So those two things are the only things that appear in our derivative for n equals k plus 1, so it's okay to use that. Okay, so let's continue. So k times x to the k minus 1 times x is the same thing as kx to the k, and we're going to add x to the k times 1, which is just x to the k. So let's factor out an x to the k. So we have x to the k times k plus 1. So the derivative of x to the k plus 1 is x to the k times k plus 1, which is exactly what we wanted. Therefore, the induction hypothesis holds, and the statement is true. So we've just proved using induction that the power rule works. OK, linear algebra time. So you have a matrix A, which is equal to A, B on its diagonals, 0 everywhere else. This implies that A to the power of n is just equal to A to the n, B to the n on diagonals, and 0 everywhere else. Okay, so what we can do is we can check the base case. So the base, um, we want n equals 1 here. Well, a to the 1 is just equal to a0, 0, 0, b, which is the same thing as a to the power of 1, 0, 0, b to the 1. So we're good on the base case. Okay, base case is good. Induction hypothesis, we're going to assume that n equals k is true. So what this means is that a to the k is going to be a to the k, 0, 0, b to the k on the diagonals. And now we need to show that n equals k plus 1 is true. So much like before, we're going to take a to the k plus 1, and we're going to multiply this out. So it's going to be a to the k times a. So in matrix terms, this will look like a to the k, 0, 0, b to the k times a, 0, 0, b. Okay, 
So you need to know how to do matrix multiplication to do this step. So if you don't have a linear background or linear algebra background, then don't feel bad at this point because you will learn this eventually. Okay, so matrix multiplication. Take the first row, multiply it by the second, or first row in the first matrix, multiply by the first column in the second matrix. So we're going to get a to the k times a plus zero times zero. Okay, that's the first entry. Second entry, uh, first row in the first matrix times the second column in the second matrix. This will be a to the k times zero plus zero times b to the k. Okay, third entry, second row in the first matrix times first column in the second matrix. So zero times a plus b to the k times zero. And our last entry will be second row times second column. So this will be zero times zero plus b to the k times b. So now we can simplify this. Our first one will be a to the k plus one. Our second one, well, they're both times zero, so we get a zero result. Same for the third entry, and the fourth entry will be b to the k plus one. So we've proven the induction hypothesis. Therefore, a to the k plus one will equal this matrix a to the k plus one, zero, zero, b to the k plus one. Okay, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer them the best that I can.